everyone. Welcome to the Epic Flight Academy. This is the Private Pilot Ground School. My name is Mike Thompson. And to ensure your success in this program, please, number one, study this material in our online course. Number two, view these videos to parallel that content. And number three, please review all of this content with your flight instructor. Now, what's our topic today? We've been talking about navigation, and today we want to specifically address VOR navigation. So how do I navigate using the VOR? Well, there's a four-step process I would like you to start to memorize and discuss with your flight instructor. We're going to list those steps up here. Step one is always to tune and identify. Step two is to ask myself, where am I right now? And step three is I then say, well, if I know where I am, where is it that I would like to go? Where do I want to navigate to? And then fourthly, I simply answer my own question and say, okay, well then how do I get there? So you see those four steps up here. Tune and identify. Where am I? Where do I want to go? And how am I going to get there? So imagine that we tried to navigate with a VOR and we skip step one, either accidentally or inadvertently forgot about it and did not properly tune and identify the VOR. So I could be navigating to a VOR in Ocala and have the VOR in Ormond Beach tuned in. As I navigate on this VOR, I think that I'm navigating correctly. All of a sudden, I show up in Ormond Beach, and I think, well, how did I get here? I used the instrument correctly. Ha <laughs> ha, problem was, I did not tune and identify the correct station first. So that takes us to step two. Now, you can see in our example from the online course, Tune the proper VOR frequency and identify that station. Then, step two, where am I? Well, that is not at all difficult to determine with the VOR. Here's what you do. Turn that OBS selector that we talked about until the flag flips to a from indication. Now, I don't care where we want to go quite yet. If we want to cross a radial or go to the station or from the station, hold on, we're still just on step two. Where am I? Spin it until the flag flips to from and continue to spin it until that CDI needle centers up. Let's say, for example, I turn the OBS until the from flag comes up and it centers up at 180. That means my aircraft receiver is somewhere on that 180 radial. I am somewhere south of this station. And if it's a VOR DME or a TACAN, uh, a VOR TACAN, I can determine how far away I am on that radial. So now I've got a pretty good idea of where I am. So that takes me to my third question. I say, well, where do I want to go? Hmm. Let's say, for example, I wanted to fly directly to that station. Ah, all right. Now I answer my fourth question. How do I get there? And you can see that in the example from our online course. I'm going to center that CDI with a two indication because I want to go to the station. So you see the importance of using these four steps to help me navigate with the VOR. 
Now, let's take a look at our next example here from the online course. And in the green panel here, you see our aircraft navigating toward that station on radial 180. And we're going to talk about the skill of bracketing. Now, be sure to review this with your flight instructor. Now, take a look at airplane number one. Airplane number one has a heading of 360 with the OBS set to 360 degrees and the flag on two. So it's 360 degrees two and it's heading 360 degrees and that's airplane number one on course to the station. Now, notice in our example, we're showing that large blue arrow. That's the wind from the east. Now, in airplane number two, that easterly wind has blown me west of my course. Now, my OBS still says 3602 but the needle is showing me that my course is to the east or to my right. And so now I've changed my heading to 020 degrees to fly back on course. Now, take a look at airplane number three. Airplane number three shows me back on course, 360, and the OBS still set, 3602. Well, as is not uncommon, the wind shifts, the wind change, and these winds let up a little bit. And in airplane number four, I am now drifting east, or my course is slightly to my west or to my left. And now let's take a look at aircraft in position number five. Now this aircraft shows a wind correction angle of a heading of zero one zero or 10 degrees. And my OBS is still set to 3602. The aircraft is holding its course inbound to the station. Now that's a quick review of bracketing, and you're going to want to be sure to review that with your flight instructor, both in the FTD and, of course, in the airplane. Now, let's get uh, an idea of reverse sensing. If you've worked with VORs at all, you've probably heard this term, reverse sensing. And we show an example of it here on the screen. This is from our online course. And I want you to understand the VOR is not really reverse sensing. What's happening is the pilot is flying to a station with a from indication or from a station with a to indication. In our example, you can see the yellow aircraft here. The yellow aircraft is inbound on the 270 degree radial. So that yellow aircraft is west of the station and inbound on that 270 degree radial. But it's flying with a 270 from indication. Notice the pilot is flying 090, but he's not flying from the station. So it's not really the VOR that's reversed, it's the pilot that's reversed. Another way to think about it is this, picture the receiver in that yellow aircraft. The receiver is saying, hey, if we were flying from the station, your course would be to the south or to your left which is what the CDI needle is indicating. So it's not the receiver that's reversed, it's the pilot flying to with a from or from with a to indication.
Now, let's have a look at the two places where the receiver can get a little bit confused. Okay, and these two places are called the cone of confusion and the zone of ambiguity. So take a look at the example on screen. If I were to fly directly over the top of the VOR, the VOR DME, or the Vortac, I would be in what's called the cone of confusion. The aircraft would not really know, am I going to, am I going from? The receiver wouldn't be able to discern that accurately. It would be confused momentarily. Now, work on this with your flight instructor. As you pass over the top of that station, this receiver will only be in that cone of confusion for a very short period of time. The other one is called the zone of ambiguity, and you can see that here in this diagram. The zone of ambiguity is at that 90 degree point from my OBS selection. And that zone of ambiguity is where that to from flag flips. And you're going to want to be sure to review that with your flight instructor. You can see that in the simulator or the FTD and he'll show you or she will show you how that works in the aircraft. Now, just a quick review. If we tune and identify the proper station and we were flying inbound to that station on the 360 degree radial, what would our heading be? Hmm, think about it for a second. And if you answered our heading would be 180, you're correct. Well, folks, those are the basics of a VOR navigation. See you next time.